Hey there guys, TC Made with TC Gaming. Today I wanted to bring you a video in partnership with Ninja Bear Studios. We're going to be talking about some of their plugins over the course of the next few videos, and then we're also going to be doing a devlog of using their plugins to hopefully rebuild the Action RPG Studio Kit from Unreal Engine, from Epic. We've had a lot of problems with that one in the past. We're going to try and replace the uh, internal functionality that using the Ninja Bear Studios plugins. But today we're going to be talking about Ninja Input. Ninja Input, um, which I had here on the screen, is um, one of their plugins that allows you to separate and reuse your input handling. So what this actually does is it creates uh, an interface basically between your input and the code that gets run from it. And um, it's kind of an interesting way of laying this out, but it does allow you to have a lot of flexibility and a lot of reusability in your code. So let's talk about going ahead and getting this in here. First thing we would do, obviously, is download this, get it into your library. You would also go into your project and install that to the engine and whatever engine version you're using. I'm using 5.5.1. What we're going to do is we're going to start a new project. And we're going to make sure that this is enabled in that project and then go through and do some configuration for it. So let's just walk through those steps. All right, so first of all, we're just going to load up this uh, brand new project. And this one's going to be just a regular old uh, third-person project to get us started. All right, I'm going to go to Games and select Third Person. I'm going to put this just on my D drive. And I'm going to call this NBS for Ninja Bear Studios underscore. And I'm going to call it Tutorials because we're going to do quite a few of these in the same project. And we'll just create that as a standard uh, blueprint project. I don't have any starter content in there or anything. Once this loads up, then we'll go ahead and we'll enable the plugin. And we'll go through a couple of things before we do that, just to get our feet on the ground here. Once our project is loaded, we can go over and check out some of the things in our world settings. We see that under our selected game mode, we have a third person character. And then we have a player controller class here that's uh, really just a default, doesn't actually do anything in here. And uh, we want to go and look at this default pawn class first because in here, this is where all of your input mappings and your uh, input for movement and all that kind of stuff is in this particular section here. So we want to replace this with the Ninja Bear Studios plugin for input and the benefit of it is that we can take this code and take it out of the third person character and still be able to control the third person character with the code by using it on a player controller, which is where most of that stuff should really be anyway, especially if you're doing multiplayer games. So what we want to do to configure this, first thing we're going to do is go into our edit and look at plugins. And we would have installed this, of course. So we're going to look at Ninja and that'll pull up the ones that we have. We're going to put Ninja input on here. And just hit the restart now and let that fire up our project. Once our project comes back, we want to go into Edit, Project Settings. And under the search, I think you just want to look up the word Context. And that will bring up Enhanced Input. And we want to make sure that we don't have any other default mapping context already assigned in this project. Because we're going to be using the Ninja Bear Studios plugin to cover that. So we don't want to have any conflicts here. Once we make sure that that's empty, we can also go into our third person character again, and we're going to take any of this code that has to do with movement and strip it from the project. So we just delete it like so, hit compile, save. And if you now were to start your project, your character would just stand there and not be able to move. I'm moving my left and right uh, mouse button, my WASD keys, nothing's happening because I don't have any input code inside of that character. So we can verify that that's now shut off. I'm hitting shift escape to get back out of my project for a second. And what we can do now is if you go down into the input folder, you'll see that there's a thing here called IMC default. This is an input mapping context. The input mapping context gives you the mappings of your jump, your move, and your look. And it tells it which buttons are configured to fire whatever this command would be. So if I hit W, it fires the move code. S fires the move code, so on and so forth. Now, inside of Ninja Bear Studios plugins, they have a thing that you're going to basically combine an IMC or an input mapping context with its actions. So in here, when we jump, 
This tells it what we're going to do. It triggers this effect for, uh, you know, for jumping or whatever. It's, we're going to take the default mapping context, this input mapping context, and assign it to different pieces of code, which are referred to as input handlers. So I'm going to right click down here, and you'll see Ninja Bear Studio, Ninja Input, and it has an input setup. And then there's also input handlers, which we can use to make our own, but we're going to start with an input setup. And I'm going to call this NBS for Ninja Bear Studios, and I'll just call it IS for input setup. If I go into the Ninja Bear Studios input setup, you'll see now when I want to save this, this is a um, validation check because I haven't set that up yet. I should have set it up before I saved it. But it's telling me that I'm missing an input mapping context and input handlers inside of that plugin uh, NBS IS thing that I just created. So we'll go in here, NBS IS, and the input mapping context that we want to use, in this case, we'll just use IMC default because we already have one. And for our input handlers, we can specify that we already have some things in here where we want to be able to move. These are pre-built for, um, for Ninja Bear Studios to handle these. So what they've basically done is they've taken all that other code for uh, running and walking, or for, I'm sorry, for WASD keys to move and jump. They've already put these in these little um, input handlers. So we want to use, uh, we'll just say, use the one for move. And when you expand this out, there's an input handler for this, and then there's trigger events. And you have, under the input action, they have a placeholder here for Ninja Bear input to move, but we want to use the one that comes with our project. So we already have one called move. We're going to switch this to IA move. The next input handler we'll do is we'll just add another one in here. Oops, sorry, I thought I had that rolled up. And this one here is going to be called look and same thing we'll expand these out and this uh input action here we're going to switch this one to the default look so there's ia look and we'll add one more which is going to be for jumping so move look and jump which is what we had configured previously and in our input handler input actions this will be wired to IA jump. We'll just replace those default sections there. Now, what I said earlier is um, this also wants mapping, mapping context and handlers here. Let's see. Missing input mapping context. We gave it the IMC. We gave it the move. So let's make sure I didn't miss anything down through here. Input actions are defined. Trigger events are defined. Look. Yep, that blocks those tags. I a look. Just going through making sure I didn't miss something. And for character jump, there's an IA jump. All right, so should be okay. I think it was just a, um, I declared that. So now the other thing we want to do is we want to create a player controller class to assign these to. So if we go to player controller class, um, you can see that we just we have the default one and then there's a debug camera controller one. So we want to create a new one. And you can create this wherever you want to. I'm just going to create it right here. I'm going to go to blueprint class and get a player controller right here. And I'm going to call this MBS again for Ninja Bear Studios. Just to keep the naming consistent, NBS underscore player controller. And inside of the player controller, we want to go here and add our Ninja Bear Studios input manager. And this is the thing that's actually going to um, assign how the player controller when we fire different codes that it's going to respond back and push it to this character. So this Ninja Input Manager, we'll come over to the Input Handler Setup, and we're going to go and pick our NBSIS that we created, Ninja Bear Studios Input Setup. We're going to assign that to that player controller. And then what we want to do over here is for the player controller class, we want to switch this to be our Ninja Bear Studios player controller. And if we hit play now, we should be able to move our left 
uh, where I'm moving my, my mouse around. I'm hitting the W key, hitting the S key, the D key, the A key, and the space bar. <clears throat> and I have back the ability to do all the things that I did previously. All right, so that's pretty handy and pretty straightforward. Now, what I was saying before is um, by creating a mapping default or an input mapping context and the setup, the setup's already done now. We already have pretty much what we'd have here. Now, if we wanted to create new input handlers, we have ones for looking and jumping or whatever. But if I go down here and create another one, you'll see that they actually have some that are predefined when we turn gas on. These would be able to send um, codes to activate abilities by tags or activate abilities by inputs or classes. And a lot of this is already set up for you so that you'll be able to do different uh, events with using this input setup already pre-built. If we wanted to build our own um, so that we could have a handler for something like an attack, for example, we could do that by, we have to create an action all right, so right now we would go in here and say we want to do a new input action. And I'll call this IA underscore attack. And under my IA underscore attack, I can go in here and look at all the different things. There's the action. Let's see, it's going to be a digital bool. Let me compare this for a second. I don't know if I can open these at the same time, but yeah, I can. All right, so it's going to be pressed and released for triggers. We'll do pressed and released. Our attack button is pretty much the same as uh, what our jump action would be, right? So attack is pressed and released. I hit press twice there. And digital bool. It looks like everything else should pretty much be the same. And we'll save that. So now we have an attack uh, option there. Go back up to input into the IMC default. And we'll put in our mapping for IA attack. And then we just need to tell it what key to do. So I'm going to click this little keyboard button and then left click. And it'll pick up automatically. I want to use the left mouse button for an attack. Okay, and now inside of the input setup, I had this index three here. I can now come down, and I need to I need to have a, a thing that's wired up and connected to this. So, what we want to do is right click out here and go to Ninja Bear Studio, Ninja Input, Input Handler, and I'm going to call this. Let's see what their naming convention is here. I'll just call it, um, just for the sake of what we're doing here, I'll call it NBS underscore attack. And then in the attack code, you have overrides here. And you'll have different things for like when it starts the event or triggers the event or whatever. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to fire out here to handle the started event. And... We need to get NBS attack to be, it's already in our IMC. Yeah, we have a left mouse there. And then in the input setup, NBS attack here. So it's identified and then down here, we're gonna put under the input handler Whenever we use the input attack, it's going to trigger an event. And we want to pick which one we want to trigger. So we're, we're going to pick started, which is what we picked in the other piece of code for this. And let's see what we have here. Missing input mapping context and handlers. Let me clear that. And what we should be able to do now is in this NBS attack, I'm just going to put a toggle breakpoint on here. And we'll hit start. And when I hit the left mouse button, 
you can see that it went into that handle started event code. So if I wanted to just make sure that I had feedback coming in here, I'm going to take this breakpoint off. And in here, I could just put um, something like a, uh, you know, something to display the fact that I've done that. So in this place, I'll use a um, an input um, or string. Uh, sorry. I think of the name of the thing. I'll use a print string. And I'll just put a simple thing in here that says uh, I am attacking. And that should be enough. And now let's just see what happens here. So when we, you know, again, we can run around WASD or whatever. As soon as I hit the left mouse button, you'll see I am attacking over there in the top left-hand corner. I'll move this down to gray so you can see it in blue over there. I am attacking. So every time I hit my left mouse button, I get an I am attacking. Now, if you were doing a normal attack thing in gas gameplay ability system, you'd have cooldowns and, uh, you know, maybe a stamina check in there or something like that. This is just to show you that the input system is working as uh, as designed. Okay. So, again, my name is TC Made with TC Gaming. I am doing partnership videos with Ninja Bear Studios and... Um, Again, their plugins, if you go out to the marketplace or whatever, uh, just look for Ninja Bear Studio. And they have quite a few things out here. They've got Ninja Gas, Ninja Inventory, Combat, Factions, and Ninja Input. And if you get an opportunity, you want to pick these up. Um, if there's any sales, I don't know about when they would be. But uh, if you get an opportunity to take a look at these, we are going to be doing a devlog series trying to rebuild the action RPG gameplay system using gas and the combat system that's in here so uh thanks again for watching you guys have a great day and more videos will be coming out soon thank you